In the previous tutorial, we have discussed how to create a glow effect around an object like this, using volumetric lighting in Blender. In this second part, we will learn how to create a light cone like this, again using the same volumetric lighting. The same technique works both for EV, as well as for cycles. And the link to the first part is given in the description below. So let us start with a blank new file. Here is our default cube, and we will first add a simple floor here. So go to the Add menu, and add a plane. Enlarge it sufficiently. We need to then move this cube upward, so that it rests perfectly on the floor, or the ground. Cool. Now, let us turn on the Render View mode. We have two types of lighting in this scene. One is this default light added by Blender. And then we have the environment lighting. To get a better lighting effect for this scene, please go to the World tab and change this background color to a dark color, almost near black. Then select this light object and go to the Light tab. This light is of sun type. Please change it to a spotlight. We need to then change its power to a high value, say 5000. We need to also change the angle of the light, so hold this yellow handle and drag it in order to focus the light directly on our cube. The light is actually too wide, so we can change its size by reducing this angle, the focus angle. We want the light to focus just on the subject, the cube in this case. Let us also adjust its orientation a little more. A spotlight like this can add dramatic effect into your scene, if used correctly. Okay, we will now create the light cone, so let us first go back to the solid view mode. We need an actual cone object for the light cone, so from the add menu, add one cone. Let us move up the cone little bits so that we can see it better. We will then go to the edit mode. To select everything, and select only this top vertex. Now go to the mesh menu, and under snap, select the cursor to selected option. The 3D cursor will move to this vertex. Now go back to the object mode. Go to the object menu and under set origin, select origin to 3D cursor. So the origin of this cone object is now moved to this vertex position. Let us realign this cone to match exactly with our light object. We can actually hide the 3D cursor as its purpose is over. While the cone is selected, go to the object properties tab and please remove any location or rotation value that may be present here, basically reset everything. Now, expand this relations section. Then in the parent field, select the light object. The cone will now follow the location and rotation of our light. We will extend the cone in this direction to match it with this imaginary light cone. So, in the object properties, increase its Z-scale factor sufficiently so that it cuts through this floor. We have to also change its width. So select both the X and the Y scale factors together, and increase them slowly, in order to match it approximately with the light cone. We don't need to be very perfect. Now, we will keep only the upper half of the cone and remove this section below the plane. So while the cone is selected, go to the Modifiers tab and add one Boolean modifier. We have to use the Difference option. And in the Object field, please select the plane. The lower part of the cone is now removed, so just apply this modifier. Finally, we are done with the modeling part and the setup. We have to now add a suitable material for the cone, and it will turn into our desired light cone in a minute. First, turn on the rendered view mode. Then for the cone object, go to the materials tab, and create a new material. By default, a principled BSDF is created for the surface output, but we have to remove it, so click here, and select this Remove option. Now the surface will display none. Then, under this Volume section, here we have to select, a Volume Scatter Shader. As soon as you make the change, you will notice a light cone appeared here. But we can make it even better, by decreasing this density value to 0.1, or 0.2. And we get a nice light cone, like this. But there are a couple of problems here with this light cone that we need to fix as well. The first thing is, you can see that the lines are quite jagged or uneven at this location, near the light, and to fix that, we have to go to the Render Properties tab. Then, expand this section called Volumetrics. Under this, the volumetric lighting should be enabled. And we have to change this tile size. 
Let us select two pixels. It will increase the rendering time, but the jagged lines will be corrected, we'll now get a smooth border for the light cone. The other thing is, this border is also very sharp, it will look even better if we can create a soft border for this cone. So, select the light object, and go to the light tab. We have a blend factor here. If you increase this to say, 0.5, we will get a soft border for the light cone, which looks far better. And we can also hide the overlays, so that the light cone is more prominently visible. So, this is where all the tutorials on light cone usually stop. But we will go one more step ahead, and discuss another important issue. If you look minutely, you will notice that there is a very faint, and dark box visible here, around this light cone, which is the bounding box of the cone. This is actually created by the secondary lights, for example, environment lighting. Let us go to the World tab. The defect will be more easily visible, if we increase the environment lights, or make it less dark, like this. So you can now see that we have this bounding box, around the light cone, which completely kills the effect that we created. One way to remove this box, is to reduce the environment lighting, let's say we make it zero, the bounding box will then disappear from here, and it will look flawless. But in case you want to add some environment light, let's say we enter 0.02, you will see the black bounding box reappear, and sometimes it may be actually necessary to keep some environment light. This does not happen in cycles, this is specific to only EV. We know that EV cannot handle the volumetric lighting very efficiently, at least not yet. But I have discovered a nice trick to make it work even in EV. For that, we have to first select the cone, which has gone under the light object, after we parented it. We have to now go to the materials tab. Here, we have used a volume scatter shader. Instead of that, please select the principled volume shader. This has the same fields as that of the volume scatter, so the density will be 0.2. But we have to increase this emission strength, so that the bounding box matches perfectly with its surroundings. Let us first try with a value of say, 0.02. The bounding box is too bright, so we have to use some lower value. Let us make it 0.001, but it turns out black. So let us try with 0.003. This is much better. But if we increase it slightly, say we make it 0.004, the bounding box will be completely invisible, and you can apply this trial and error method, to find out a suitable value for the emission, based on the amount of environment light that your scene may have. So, this is an easy technique to create a perfect light cone, both in cycles, as well as in EV. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.